Hello, everyone. Good day. Um, I am Rita Enibili, and so nice to have another office hour with you guys. So this week is the Git and GitHub week, and I'm going to be talking more about version control, right? So you get, uh, you get to understand every single thing about version control. So I am going to start with um, defining version control, talking about the three different types of version control we have, um, the difference between Git and Git org. We're also going to talk, um, also going to um, determine, I'm also going to explain basically if um, Git can work without Git org and vice versa, right? And then we're also going to explain and learn why online high DEs are not the same as version control system, right? So we have um, we have quite some things to learn about. It's going to be more of a, more of an explanation class, but um, I'm going to still do a bit of practical, but it's going to be more of explanation today. So yeah. So basically, version control, the first thing I want to say is version control is not just for developers, right? It's a common misconception that version control is just for developers. No, it is not just for developers. The way you can um, version your codes, the way you can save different versions of your codes by pushing at different times to your repository in GitHub or whatever cloud um, cloud system you're using, right? That's the same way other people in different fields can also use version control. So the whole idea of version control is just to basically manage your files, manage changes to your file. The file you're managing changes to can be a developer file, that is a programming file, or it can be a design file, or it can be a a technical writer file, right? So it's basically a general concept that can be applied in different fields. Yeah, this is actually version control week. So I'm going to be talking about version control for the week. So yeah, it's not a thing for developers, but yeah, developers use version control. So take for example, a designer that designs things, designers design things, right? And then a client meets a designer and asks for a, for a design, a car design, right? And then the, the designer actually submits a blue car design to the client. And then the client is like, oh, I don't like this blue car design. Can you make it red? Right, so the designer can apply version control by leaving that blue version, make a copy of the blue version, and then edit the copy. That is, change the copy to be red, right? Depending on how they do their designs, but right, it can have the blue version as version one, and then edit the design into a second version and label it version two, and then it can now submit that design to the client. If the client now says, "Oh, um, I thought," the red design will be better. I don't want the red design anymore. Please, um, I want the blue design. So instead of the designer now to start editing the red design again, designer can easily just submit the version one, which is the blue design, right? So version control is simply something that just helps people work effectively and track changes to their code. Back in the days when people write, People actually write in versions and then compare their edits. They compare different versions of what they have written and say, oh, I had this change. This is what I did at this point in time. This is my previous version and this is my new version. They just get to compare their, what they are working on, right? So version control is a general concept that can be used in different fields, right? And GitHub, GitHub is not, um, GitHub is actually, is not the version control system. GitHub is a cloud services. It's a cloud service that helps you work with version control systems better, right? So GitHub is not just for 
developers, yes, GitHub, developers use GitHub a lot, but since GitHub accept files, different people can also upload different things to GitHub, right? So yeah, so how did version control start? Before, back in the days, back in the days, um, developers did not have Git or, or Git, right? So they would locally store versions of their files. The locally store versions of their files on their machine, right? So um, the way the way GitHub works, the way um, version control works back then, the way they do it. So let's say we have um, we have this file folder right right here. Back then, back then they didn't also have code editors. You know, code editors actually make the work of a programmer easier. So back then they would normally you know write code with default text editors like Notepad for Windows machine and then text edit for Mac machines, right? So what they would do, so I'm just going to search Notepad here and show you how it works in those days. And then I can have, so this can be a text file depending on who is working on what, right? But let's say it's the, the developer file, right? So I'm going to have file. So I'm just going to create a simple HTML document here. And see, Notepad is actually a text editor. It doesn't give you all the, doesn't give you what's, doesn't make things easier for you the way you have um, VS Code or online editors that to complete things for you and make your work better. In Notepad, back in the days, you have to type every single thing yourself. So it's actually very important you understand version control well. So that's why I'm taking my time to explain this. So I'm just going to have an H1 tag here and I'm going to say hello. So I have this file here, this HTML file. And I'm just going to type Ctrl S to save this. I'll save it directly to my desktop as index.html. Right, and I'm going to change this to all files. This is how it was done. And I'm just going to save that. So you can see this is a text editor. It is not like a code editor. So I can't even write, I can't even write click and click on live server to run. There's no way to run this. The only way is just to double click on the file directly and it appears on your browser, right? So the way they would normally do this after creating a file. After creating a file, um, I'm just going to right click on this, right? And after I right click on this, I'm going to now I'm going to send it to a compressed zip folder. So I'm just going to name that folder fashion finish. So if I open this zip folder now, as you can see, and I have my index.html here in this index, um, in this zip folder, and I see have it outside here, but I have it in this zip folder. Now see what happens if I click on this, if I double click on this, no, that's opening it up. So if I, So I'm supposed to get an option to edit just like this one when I'm using a normal text, but it's, I don't know why it sounds misbehaving, but as you can see here, if I right click on this, if I double click on this, it opens up, it opens up 
here in the notepad, right? It opens up here in the notepad. But this one, I can't open it directly. It opens up in the browser. So well, basically, they would have this zip file, right? And then when they edit their code again, right? What is wrong with this? So when they edit their code again, so I'm going to open this with Notepad. For some weird reasons, I can't open with my normal notepad here. But basically, they would have this first version and then push it to the zip file, right? And then when they are working on a new version, right? They're working on a new version. Anything that is here, the new version of the code, right? And they're not working on a new version. They would now they will save this as a new file, right? So let's say we have this here again. And save this. So when they create a new version two, they would add it to the existing, the existing zip folder, right? And it will now save here as a new version. And what's, why the zip folder is actually being used is the fact that the zip folder, you can't really, you can't edit a previous version. Anything you are editing would actually save as a new version. So it's just like this one I have here for ordinary text. This one I have here for ordinary text. I have a version one and version two here. So if I double click on this version two right here now, this is a normal text, right? This I'm a technical writer and I want to, and I want to um, write in version. So let's say I now put in here, yeah, hello, Victoria, blah, blah, blah. I just type in something extra, right? And then I click, I enter control S. You can see it's going to ask me to save this again, right? So I'm just going to save this as version three. And if I save that, if I save that and close this all, if I click on this, my version two, you see that it did not, it did not edit this current version, right? But it saved the file as a new version that I can now carry and drop into the version, into the zip file. So the zip file actually just basically help them in the past manage um, files in versions, right? So that is actually the same way version control system works. So this is actually the local way of versioning files in those days. And then with this, this are actually um, a point of failure. This actually add a point of failure, right, in the sense that, oh, we're saving this in our local machine. So saving this in our local machine means that if the local machine actually crash, everything is going to be lost, 
right? Everything is going to be lost. And there was no way to really collaborate because everything is on your machine. So how do you really collaborate apart from maybe you want to start copying your file and sending it as a mail or stuff like that, which is totally inefficient. That is why we now have this centralized version control system. So the first time we had local version control system, and then it's now advanced to centralized version control system. So the way centralized version control system works, there is a centralized server, right? There's a centralized server. Let me go to my browser, please. So the way version control system works, there's a centralized server and in that centralized server, everybody working on different versions of their code actually pushes it to that centralized server, right? So since it is on the centralized server, although it still have a single point of failure, but now they can now collaborate, right? They can now collaborate with different people because since it's an, it's an online server, anybody can actually fetch the file that they are working on anybody can actually share files easily. So I can push a file to the centralized server and then somebody and then somebody else fetches the file from the centralized server. So the centralized server actually brought a way, made it possible for developers to collaborate. So I hope everyone can hear me. Made it possible for developers us to collaborate down permanently or if the centralized server had some technical issues and had to do some maintenance and stuff like that at that point 